Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of Westeros Craft Walks with your host, Dutch Guard. Today, we're going to be checking out Salt Pans and the Quiet Isle. But we're starting here in Salt Pans. I'm atop its castle, the seat of House Cox. And we're going to be taking a look down through the town. We're going to sail through the bay here and to the Quiet Isle, which is off uh, past my render distance here, but we'll get there eventually. So here we are in the town of Salt Pans. Salt Pans is located in the Riverlands at the mouth of the Trident. The Trident is the three rivers that combine and uh, open out here towards the Narrow Sea. It's where the Riverlands gets its name. And um, it opens out to the Bay of Crabs, which eventually flows eastward towards the Narrow Sea further out that way. Um, so uh, out here you can see the Palisade Wall stretching around the town, protecting it from raiders. We've got some forests over there and some farmland out in the distance as well. Um, and so let's check out this castle. So uh, House Cox, as I said, which uh, is who this castle belongs to, is a knightly house. So they aren't a lordly house, so they don't have a lord, but they have a knight known as the Knight of Salt Pans, Sir Quincy Cox, who um, is quite prominent in this area. And he's sort of the protector of salt pans. And in fact, he's got some sons off fighting the War of the Five Kings, which is going on during the uh, timeline of our server. Um, here we are in the uh, Great Hall of uh, the Salt Pans Castle. It doesn't really have a name, the Salt Pans Castle, unlike most castles. And in fact, House Cox, we don't even know what their sigil looks like, so we've just invented some colors there. Some uh, looks like light blue and white. Um, so in here, you've got all the comforts of your ordinary castle, except I don't think this castle has a uh, maester's. And that's uh, because I think maesters usually, they only work for lords, and uh, that's really, lords need maesters more than knights who just sort of, uh, they get to sit around in their castles and they don't really do much other than protect the immediate lands around them. They're not really that politically involved. Um, so uh, we're just heading into the town of Salt Pens now. Um, Salt Pans isn't really featured all that heavily in the books or the TV show, but actually, if you're caught up with the TV show and you've seen the last episode of Season 5, um, one of the characters actually does end up here, and uh, so you know sort of what to expect and uh, what that character is about to do. Uh, but I'm trying really hard not to say who that is, because it is a big spoiler. Uh, so we're in this little market area here of salt pans. Around us you can see some great examples of middle-class Riverland-style houses, with some slate roofs, stub and wattle, stone uh, foundations, and some wooden supports and beams supporting the structure. Uh, we've got some fresh fish and seafood being sold here. You can get some uh, freshly cut chops of beef here, beef and pork, from Bert the Butcher. And we're going to walk through, and uh, you're going to see these thatched roof houses here, which are sort of the lower class buildings of salt pans, sort of a, a lower style uh, house, you know, one level thatched roofs, mostly wooden. We've got some moss growing here, so maybe not so well maintained. Um, and in this area here, we've got the namesake of salt pans, uh, which are these big iron pans uh, upon which uh, the workers pour salt water, and the water is boiled off and left with this beautiful salt, which I can only imagine is some of the finest in Westeros, and is salt pans' is, uh, biggest export. You can see a pile of it here. Um, so that's pretty much salt pans. So uh, let's head out onto the bay. Um, you can see here another pile of salt on the docks here. And in fact, if you look at one of the frames of, uh, or one of the shots of that last episode of Season 5, you can see a worker in the background shoveling salt uh, onto a ship or into some crates. Um, so that's the kind of detail we've gone into with this area. Um, it's featured uh, uh, towards the end of uh, Storm of Swords, uh, so it's a pretty cool area. Um, and we're heading to a quiet isle now, which is featured in uh, Feast for Crows, where a different character comes in. Um, but that hasn't been featured in the show yet, uh, but if you've read A Feast for Crows, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, here we've got a purple-sailed vessel, which is a Bravosi merchant ship. And uh, <laughs> you'll know why that's there if you've uh, read A Storm of Swords or uh, saw the last episode of Season 5. Um, so here we are, just heading up to uh, the Quiet Isle. So the Quiet Isle is sort of the Westeros equivalent of an island monastery. It's where devotees of the Faith of the Seven will come to... Uh, seek penance for their past wrongdoings or misgivings, and uh, just to live uh, with each other and share food and shelter and just sort of live harmoniously away from the worries of Westeros, uh, which can be a pretty chaotic and violent place. Um, so here we've got some lovely apple trees, a nice apple orchard, some stables for uh, some donkeys, uh, maybe even a horse or two. Uh, we've got some barley fields up there and those terraced fields. Um, it's a really lovely, beautiful little island um, in the middle of the Bay of Crabs, 
uh, isolated from uh, from Westeros. And the only way to get there is to walk through mud flats at low tide. Uh, uh, normally, you wouldn't be able to sail across the Bay of Crabs to the Quiet Isle like I did, because uh, the mud will get your your boat stuck. Um, so at, at low tide, you have to walk it. And uh, apparently, if you are um, worthy of coming to the Quiet Isle, Quiet Isle, you'll make it through. But otherwise, you'll get stuck in the quicksand, and you'll you'll uh, meet a very unkind fate when the tide comes back in. Um, so here's another detail of uh, the Quiet Isle, which is a hermit's cave where the elder brother lives, the elder brother being sort of the leader of the, uh, the people who live here at the Quiet Isle. And this cave uh, predates the events of A Song of Ice and Fire by about 2,000 years, so this island has been inhabited, inhabited for quite some time. Uh, here we are heading into the main complex of the Quiet Isle. You can see that beautiful sept there. Uh, we've got some dormitories here on the left for uh, the inhabitants of the Quiet Isle. Um, not really the most luxurious accommodation, four to a room, a very th small three by three room. But um, it's all about living together in peace and harmony and, you know, making friends <laughs> and having fun. Um, so we've got some uh, lovely high windows here for the sept and the high ceiling. A really beautiful example of a sept here, sept architecture. We've got all the portraits of the sept seven hanging on the walls. Um, every every uh, every god has their uh, candle lit, even the stranger. Everyone's equal here. Everyone gets equal praise. And here we've got the main eating area for the people of Quiet Isle, a banner of the faith of the seven here. Plentiful bread, bread which they probably made themselves from uh, grinding the barley. Um, and uh, baking the bread here in the kitchen. Uh, lovely, nice little kitchen here. And here we're going out into the garden, um, where they have pretty much all the crops you could want. You've got some turnips, carrots, cabbages. You've got a sour leaf patch here. Sour leaf being that uh, quite unpleasant cabbage type thing that um, some people like to chew on. If you remember, the uh, innkeep from the Crossroads Inn quite likes to chew on some of that. Uh, we've got the... Um, Sort of uh, some beehives here, which are, which have some bees uh, buzzing around. Um, another interesting product of uh, the Quiet Isle. Um, so let's head up to this uh, windmill up here, uh, where they grind the barley and wheat. And uh, just past the windmill here, on the far side of the island, uh, that's that's it really. There isn't much to this island. It's a very small island in the Bay of Crabs. You can see some stone cottages down there, which is for visitors of the Quiet Isle, and also for women to sleep in, because women are allowed to visit, but not really stay in the Quiet Isle. In fact, they're not even allowed to sleep in the same bed or room as uh, as the men of the Quiet Isle. Um, so they are pretty conservative here, uh, keeping the uh, the sexes apart. Um, so that's it really. That's the Quiet Isle. Very nice little peaceful paradise away from uh, the worries of Westeros. Uh, so that concludes our episode. If you want to check out these locations, just log on to the server and do slash warp quad isle or slash warp salt pans and take a look around. Um, there are two locations that are featured in the books, um, so you can uh, follow the footsteps of the characters that visit there. Uh, so that concludes episode 10. Can't believe we've got 10 episodes already. If you want to see more of our episodes, then just check out our YouTube channel. And I should have another episode, episode 11, coming up in just a couple days, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you very much for watching and for the continued positive feedback and support, and I will see you next time at the next episode.